What's going on everybody? It's been a while since I've been working on my SI and I got a few new parts and then I'm gonna go ahead and install today. We're gonna start by doing the bushings on the original toe arms. Bought the Prothane set, part number looks like 8-309-BL. They call it compensator arm if you're looking it up. That's what these are actually called, the technical term. I'm not going to show you how to remove them. If you're interested in that, click on the top video. I replaced the arms on my 90 Civic with the Password JDM arms. That'll be the same process for getting it off the vehicle. But we're going to follow those instructions on the Prothanes. Instructions say remove the arms. Okay, we got that done. The second, it says for proceeding, measure the distance A of the original bushing as shown in figure one. They want you to measure this distance for how far this sleeve is pushed into the compensator arm. I was looking at this and I guess when this slides in, it is pretty much going to stop at that end and it looks like it will be the same distance because this is tapered so we're going to push this bushing out from the reverse side to the front side where it's, it's not holding onto the sleeve. And then we're going to press this one back in. Now, you're going to need to disassemble this first, and we're just going to press the metal sleeve into this position. But if looking at it right here, it looks like it's the same height when this is pressed in and it's flush with this, uh, I guess, the little mount right here. Okay, I'm trying to find a socket that'll fit. So, using a digital caliper if you have one. Let's see. I'm going to measure this and try it. It doesn't need to be precise, but maybe like 29 millimeters. I'm going to try this 19 millimeter socket. That's actually a little bit less than the 27.99. So this should be okay for fit. I'm going to use this to press down and see if we can get that bushing pushed out. Okay, so I have Using my 32 millimeter socket on the bottom. Got that 19 lined up. Let's see if it fits. That worked perfect, the sizing of it. Easy to get those out. Just do the other one real quick. Now to get these new sleeves in, we need to disassemble this bushing first. I'm using my press. It made it a lot easier for me to get this sleeve out. It's uh, hard to just push out with your hands or with any kind of tool. I'm going to use um, O2 sensor socket. Seems to be good uh, width for it to hold the bushing in place. And just a little extension. Because we're just trying to get that little metal cylinder removed. Let's try this out. Oh yeah, it's cake like that. Now this press has made my life so much easier and it's getting pretty worn out as you can see from my damaged arbor plates, but I made that a breeze to get that removed. Now all you need to do is just take out the two bushings, it's easy. Use a little flathead, just get the, they're, they're two separate halves. If you can get the middle of it, you can just pry it out. And the other side, the same thing. Or you can maybe just push from here. Yeah, that worked. So you just need this metal cylinder, just like that. Pressing them in shouldn't be that difficult. Which one, I'm using the flat side here because this is essentially going to stop where it meets that end, so we'll leave it just like that. And let's try this out. So 
where it goes, it stops right there. So I use, this is a 32 millimeter, it's the one I use for all my wheel, wheel spindle nuts. And this one is just a 22, it's just a little bit larger than the diameter of that. So that looks like it's exactly perfect where it needs to be. It's flush there, and it looks like it sticks out about the same amount of distance there. There it is, all finished up. Go ahead and use your lithium grease. Lubricate the inside of the sleeves where the bushings are going to be. Looks like there's already some on there when they came that way from the, the manufacturer. Go ahead and hand press those in. That's what the instructions say. And then lubricate the inside of the polyurethane bushing and then insert the metal sleeve. And here's a last look at it finished up. I wanted to put the OEM bushing there just to get a comparison of how it sat compared to the new Prothane. And it looks like it sits at the exact same distance away from where it should be. And it'll line up perfectly. Here those toe arms are completely reassembled, ready to put back on the car. Aside from that, we're going to install some other parts today. We're going to do the rear and front camber kit. The Skunk 2 Alpha rear lower control arms. I am also putting on a brand new rack and pinion with inner and outer tie rods that are brand new and also the new rack and bushing and the outer tie rods. And those parts will essentially complete my suspension rebuild on my SI. If you've seen my SI before, you've, you've seen that I have some lower control arms. These are black works. What you can't see is I already have a camber kit, an upper camber kit, which is an Ingalls. I wanted to replace them with the Skunk 2 components because I, I really like the Skunk 2 products. I know a lot of people out there call it Junk 2 and really just hate on the product. I'm a big fan. I'm not one of those guys that hates on it. I think they make some really good suspension components, um, intake manifolds, throttle bodies. I have never used their cams nor their valve train stuff, but some people seem to really like it also. So I wanted to upgrade my SI with as uh, many Skunk 2 parts as I could throw onto it. And at the same time while upgrading these parts, these parts will get to go uh, good use on other cars. I'm going to use this upper rear camber kit on my wagon. And I'm going to use the rear lower control arms because I have an old set of coilovers and shocks that I'm going to put on the CRX when I lower it. So I needed some 89 to 91 style control arms for the CRX. And the tow arm was stock. I don't have an aftermarket one. And I just wanted to replace the bushings on there. That way I can have every single bushing on this car replaced. Here's a little bit of the comparison of the Ingalls to the Skunk 2. This one's a really good kit as well. It has the urethane bushings in it. It's just old and dirty. It was a used kit that I originally got from a different car. I've had it for years now. Skunk 2 replacement, very similar. The adjustment nut. Uh, even looks the same with uh, the design in the middle, except it makes it easier with a wrench. You could spin the body so you can either pull the camber in or out. The control arms are, these Skunk 2 are a lot nicer though. These are some old black works that I've had maybe four or five years now. Bushing's still in really good shape. You can see there's a little bit of movement, but that's just from uh, normal driving, but it should be perfectly fine. They're a little dirty. These Skunk 2's are really cool. I upgraded to these. Um, they were on sale too from JHP. Got them for $169.99 shipped. They have the, the spherical bearing on the trailing arm side. This is a Delrin, I believe it was. And this one is Elastomeric. It's supposed to create uh, some of the best handling characteristics for each individual bushing at its respective location. So. I don't really drive the car hard. I just want to upgrade and these seem like a nice alternative. Try something different. And I really like the way they look, how the windows are all solid on them. Another thing that I like is when I had the sway bar on, of course I could mount it there. This is neat because a lot of times we're using Skunk 2 lower control arms. Your car's lowered. So when you lower it, this actually slides up even further so it's easier for the sway bar to meet at that position where this one it pushes the sway bar up further into the chassis, so I think it's better that the location is there. I read about these control arms, and it doesn't specify anything about that, that control arm location, but when I was just looking at mine and the way it was set up before I removed it, it kind of seemed like it would alleviate some of that room from offsetting when you lower the car.
And here's a look at that new unit versus the old. If you've ever changed bushings before, I have the energy suspension bushings in the steering rack. Make sure you swap those over. Also don't forget that other bushing that holds on to the passenger side. Um, this one had a torn boot. I don't know if the inner tie rods are in the best shape, but I imagine this is the original rack. It still has the SH3 stamp on the bottom of it. So this rack essentially would have 214,000 miles on it because that's how many miles my chassis has on it. And that's my entire reason for replacing this. I just wanted to refresh it. That way I don't have to change it out for years to come. And the outer tie rods were looking a little rough. This is the passenger side. I had never changed it. Driver's side looks a little bit better. The boot is still in good shape, but it is leaking from around the center of the boot. If you're interested in learning how to remove the rack and pinion, I have another video on it which shows you the exact process, but you do have to drop, can you see in there? I had to lower my exhaust and there's a front half of it. And I also had to lower the shift linkage. That's the only way you can get the steering rack removed. Here's the remainder of the parts that are left over when I'm finished. I ended up reusing my bushings on my upper control arms because I have the energy suspension there. These bushings were in relatively good shape, but obviously I want the camber kit and my old toe arms and tie rods. Now the camber kit is just kind of placed in the middle. I'm not going to drive the car. I am going to get it aligned. Next day I have a chance, uh, so I'll leave it the way it is. I'll try to set these, uh, the outer tie rods as close as possible just to get the wheels straight. But it's only about a five mile drive from here to uh, the tire shop. And that'll probably be the last time you'll see the Advantis on my car. These are the Ad Advanti Racing Storm S1. They're 15 by seven plus 35 offset. Weigh about 10 pounds each. I'll probably actually have these for sale in a week or two. I already sold the tires to Gabe, the guy with the white SI hatchback and the black CRX. He's gonna be putting those on his CRX. But the, the wheels, I don't know if I'm gonna hang on to them. I think I'm gonna go ahead and let them go just to make up some of the money I spent for the new set of wheels. And now we get to see what the CE28Ns look like on the SI. I think the green will look really nice with the gold wheels. I did have some old Koenig, uh, Koenig wide opens in a 15 by 8 plus 25. They were gold. That was my favorite combo with the gold and green. So that's why I went back with a gold set of wheels. Man, and here's a quick look with the CE28s on the SI. I think they look fantastic on this color of car. And here's how it sits after I got the alignment taken care of. One with a negative 2.4 camber all around. From the, the ground to the, the fender and the rear, it's about 23 inches. In the front, it's about 23 and 7 eighths inches, even though it looks like there's a little bit more of a gap in the front. It's very, very similar in height. I uh, set that before I took it to get aligned. But I really like the way it looks. It, uh, the gold on green looks really sharp together. You have to let me know what you guys think of it. And just a couple shots from different angles. Car is really dirty right now. You may not be able to see it in this kind of sunlight, but I have not cleaned it in quite a while. And this is my ugly fender, missing the pinstripe. Has a little dent under the molding. But I love this car, man. It's so clean. It's fun to drive. It's not fast, it's just uh, quick and it handles really well. I like these Nitto Neo Gen tires. They are not the grippiest, but they have some good life and they're still a relatively sticky tire for what they are. So I think I'll get some good longevity out of them, which is what I wanted. I didn't want to be swapping tires so frequently on this car, but I drive it very little that these tires would probably last me a solid seven to 10 years as long as I took care of them and they didn't dry rot. And I really love the way the wheels look. It's funny though, now my brake, my brake rotors, they're all rusty, so it's kind of contradictory of having a really nice, clean set of wheels. I also want to find some center caps just to help protect uh, the wheel bearings a little bit and keep any water 
corrosion out of there. So I'm gonna look for something, maybe the original ones or something uh, just flat, maybe some black ones. Or if I can find some universal ones that I could just paint black, I think that'd be great too. But that's it guys, let me know what you think of the new setup, the new suspension upgrades. This car is essentially done with any kind of suspension work that I want to do to it. I might upgrade the shocks and coils eventually, but the car rides great and I don't see them wearing out anytime soon. I'm going to get under the hood next and replace my throttle body, my intake, a new arm bar, and my radiator hoses. And I'll have that on the next video. Thanks for watching guys.